Hello everybody and welcome to the second episode of OpenGL Engine slash Game Development Log. Uh, in this video I will show you the features I've implemented into the engine uh, this past week. First of all, the episode was supposed to be uploaded yesterday, but I had some issues with the recording and the editing software, uh, trying to upgrade the quality of the videos. I know the two videos on my channel are a bit blurry due to compression and not the greatest recording, but I will try to make the next videos in this series better. So while I still learn the videos might not be added to the series every week, but perhaps with a slight delay. So with that out of the way, let me show you what I've been working on this time. First of all, I fixed an old bug that prevented me from creating bloom from multiple sized kernels from downsampling the screen resolution texture. Uh, now the sun reflection on glossy surfaces looks a lot better than it did before. I might have made the final bloom kernel a bit too big for the smaller surfaces such as this knife, but I think it looks okay on the skyboxes and other light sources. So what you might have also noticed uh, is the physical based rendering which I had in the engine for quite a while, um, which the ragdoll is using along with the entire scene. Here you can see how the different materials look under different light conditions. On the far left we have rusted panels, uh, next to it it's some sandstone, then gold and finally titanium. So this being the second episode of the series, I, th I thought to myself, what's better than one knife? Well of course two knives, so I've added knives to both of the hands and playing some animations here. And you can also throw both of the knives as well. I think that looks pretty cool for the moment being. Also the reflections make it quite cool. I've also been working on local motion blur for animations, so you can see here it's enabled and if I just disable it, you can see the slight difference that it makes. So if I just turn it back on, you can see the difference. I've also been working on importing uh, more complex animations, as you can see I've made this uh, front flip, which isn't really animated that well, but it's good enough for demonstrational purposes. I've also been working on fixing some bugs from the previous week. I've said that hands and feet got stuck into large triangle meshes. This week I've tried to kind of fix that, but at this moment it's still not working quite properly. This next clip shows how I um, made the head uh, turn towards the player at all times, so this might be useful for some conversations where players or NPCs are looking at each other, or if the enemy might spot the player, the head might look at his direction. As you might have noticed, I've also added sort of a nose or a beak to the ragdoll, so it's more obvious where the head is pointing. This week I've also been working on some first person and third person cameras, so this is how the kick would look. And this is me running around the map um, and doing some front flips in first person. Uh, here I also show some of the metallic materials uh, up close and show how you can throw any objects in the scene. Here the sun reflects on the gold surface. So as I've said before, I've been also working on a third person camera, so in this clip I'm just walking in third person with the skeleton. With a view like this, uh, the camera should never clip into the surface, so I've uh, used ray casting to make the camera never be able to go behind any walls. This also works when the camera is below the center of rotation. And here you can also see some of the problems with the current implementation of motion blur. As you can see, dragging the camera on the floor produces quite a bit of artifacts. This past week I've also been preparing the animation skeleton for the uh, inverse kinematics I'll be doing next week. But since I've never been working on this topic before, it might take a little longer than expected. And as you can see from the video, the skeleton's feet are being positioned and rotated according to the surface below. So the next step will be to transform the top portion of the body as well. And as you can see there's still a few bugs that need to be fixed. 
And this brings us to the end of this video. If you like the quality compared to the previous episodes, like this video. And if you would like to see more videos in the development log series, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye!